Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Zenfin Network, aka XDC. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. And of course, I always do greatly appreciate it. Now I am recording this a little bit ahead of time due to traveling for the holiday. I hope everybody's having a great weekend and a great holiday wherever you guys are, if you do celebrate it or not. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day or a great night nonetheless. Um, but today, like I said, we are going to be talking about XDC. Uh, so I have been talking about Zinfin for a little bit of time now, but you know, honestly, when we talk about things happening right now within this market, I think that we're at like a we're almost at like a sort of weird time in this market where we're really kind of just waiting for regulations to be ushered in so that we can see the next major stepping stone for crypto be unlocked. But until that point actually does come, we're basically just awaiting Bitcoin to make a move so that we can see if we are going to see that, excuse me, major wave five on Bitcoin, which will lead to alt season along the boards. Now, um, of course, like I said, by the time that this actually goes live, because it is, you know, scheduled a little bit later, uh, we still are seeing some altcoins, you know, moving quite a bit. Obviously, this might be completely different by the time that, you know, I do upload this. But, you know, you guys can kind of see some nice moves along the boards for a few assets here. Um, but nonetheless, like they're not like major moves. So I'm still kind of just waiting confirmation on Bitcoin, waiting confirmation on the dollar. Um, but now we have to really kind of wait until Monday for any sort of nice economic viewpoints on, you know, what's going to happen with, you know, indices and the dollar, etc. So uh, that's basically what I'm waiting for. Um, but with that being said, let's kind of move on and let's talk about a few things. So first off, I do want to talk to you guys about XDC this week. So I just actually did a video on XDC where I kind of did break down the weekly viewpoints on XDC, but this is a new updated one. Um, and honestly, we've seen some major updates recently. So first off, utility NFTs on the XDC network featured in WTO latest report, the World Trade Organizations and World Economic Forums. Latest re uh, report featured Trade Tech and their trade finance-based NFT transaction on the XDC network. The report is focused on Trade Tech policy, and XDC is one of the only select few blockchains or blockchain networks featured in the report. International Soccer Tournament presented by XDC Network. DC United announced its second annual Capital Cup at Audi Field. And the XDC Network is front and center. The tournament will host many international teams in Washington, DC between June 1st and 7th. Uh, Financial Times Crypto and Digital Asset Summit sponsored by XDC Network. XDC Network has announced as a sponsor of Financial Times FT Live event, which hosts some of the biggest names in DeFi plus centralized finance. The FT Live event brings uh, influential leaders together to discuss key issues happening around the globe today, gradually and then suddenly. Andre Kasterman, Christoph uh, Googleman, and XDC Network co-founder, uh, co-author, a newly published light paper titled Gradually and Then Suddenly. The publication highlights the uh, future of economics in light of the history of financial information technology. And there's been so much more um, in terms of this market. But honestly, yes, we have been seeing some major updates recently within the Zinfin Network. And uh, the weeks that come come up, man, I mean, it's just... The information that's being shared is insane. I would say like even things like this, right? This is that, you know, sponsorship. You know, we've seen just recently, again, shout out to uh, PSVIR here. Uh, yesterday, the World Economic Forum. Now today, the Financial Times. I try to stay calm and collective. But, you know, if XDC doesn't stop dropping killer uh, news, I'm going to explode. Honestly, yeah. Like we, we're continuing to see almost daily news uh, you know, being released from Zinfin. And it, it's truly remarkable to say the least that we are still at the price that we are at. Um, I think that this is just great to say the least. And um, yeah, I think that this is really interesting, especially when we look at where they are really kind of, or what they are trying to really kind of describe XDC as. XDC Network, an enterprise-ready blockchain network for everyone. A secure, scalable, and highly efficient blockchain protocol, the XDC Network was built from the ground up for the purpose of You've guessed it, bridging the gap between centralized and decentralized finance, a.k.a. talking about trade finance in general. 
Now, also, we did see that light paper get released, and honestly, it does kind of break down a few things in terms of the history of financial information technology. It's really just kind of focusing on, you know, banks in general and how we do need to streamline some processes to make sure that the future is a little bit more efficient. Honestly, blockchain technology itself definitely could provide a lot of use cases within this area. Um, I think that trade finance, they've chosen a, a perfect market to disrupt because there's not a lot of players around this space and uh, I do think that what Zinfin has built is truly remarkable in that area. Also, if you guys missed it, Flare Finance is going to be integrating XDC. So we do see the DeFi platform's upcoming launch on the Flare network uh, will integrate the XDC asset across all its products. In addition, Flare Finance and the XDC network will have uh, you know, bi-directional bridge, which will provide full interoperability between the two platforms and allow all assets on the Flare fi uh, Finance platform to be minted on the XDC network as well. XDC holders will be able to participate in Flare Finance's suit of products, possibly earning passive income by staking, borrowing, and lending. Um, I'm very excited for the future of Fair, uh, Flare Finance. This does come out in July, I believe, uh, from what I've seen, uh, which I do believe that this is going to provide a lot more value for XDC as well as the XDC network. So definitely keep a close eye out on Flare. Um, I think that Flare is a crucial stepping stone for this market in terms of utility gems. So definitely keep a close eye out on that. Also, we do see this came out three days ago. XDC paperless trade solutions provider SDOCS uh, has been acquired by intercontinental uh, exchange ICE Zenfin 413-2022. TradeFinex network creates a standard bridge from platforms like SDOCS. Uh, TradeFinex is going to be a spotlighted use case at the end of this video, so definitely keep close an eye out on that and stay until the end. Um, but we do see our intercontinental exchange buys SDOCS. And you guys can see the connections here. SDOX is now part of the ICE. You may know ICE already through its energy futures markets uh, covering Brent, gas oil, TTF, JKM, LNG, and EUA uh, futures and its soft commodity futures across coffee, sugar, and coca or cocoa. Uh, it is a, a Fortune 500 company that designs, builds, and operates digital networks to connect people to opportunity. ICE provides financial technology and data services across major asset classes that offer its customers access to mission-critical workflows, tools, that increase transparency and operational efficiencies. Two areas which SDOCS is similarly focused on. TradeFinex Network creates a standard uh, bridge from platforms like Bolero, SDOCS, and Trade Trust, subsequently allowing such platforms to participate in the secondary market. Again, TradeFinex is a key area here. And we do see here, ICE would not co comment on whether it intends to acquire more companies within the TradeFinex digitization space, as you guys do see here. But Again, when we take a look at this, I want you guys to understand that TradeFinex is a key crucial area for uh, you know XDC. We're going to be addressing why. Also, uh, we did see in terms of that initial you know tweet, we did see a little bit of a breakdown from Montre Kasterman saying more to come. Uh, and then we did see ISO 222, right? Get ready for November 2022. We continue supporting our community with ISO 222 go live for cross-border payments and reporting uh, CBPR and coexistence starting from November. This is a key year for all of us, you know, as our community engages in, you know, preparation testing. And here you guys have that ISO 222 adoption by HP, uh, VPMIs. Again, I want you guys to be, you know, prepared for what's about to happen. I would say that we are in that critical year of not only adoption, but also a major pivotal like area for crypto as well. Like this is a very pivotal time frame when you look at things happening. I know that this is just a messaging format, but pay attention to, you know, what will follow after this because we're going to see you know, adoption of a lot of these crypto projects and crypto networks and even crypto use cases, you know, continuing to grow and develop into major, major updates. So, like I said, definitely keep a close eye out on the, a lot of the things regarding ISO 222, specifically those utility gems. Now, to really sum this video up, I do want to talk to you guys about a few things. So, one, we're going to be talking about XDC, ITFA, MLETR, and then we're going to shift over to XDC Utility and TradeFinex. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It promises to help banks adopt a 21st century model whereby trust lies in interoperable digital assets, e.g. a freely transferable electronic bill of exchange versus relying on trusted channels, e.g. Swift, Swift Community. Here you guys have it. This is from ITFA. 
On another front, the alignment of national laws with the MLETR is introducing an initial concrete implementation of digital asset technologies to banks, e.g. DLT. I wonder what DLT they're talking about here, especially when you look at ITFA and where their connections are, aka to, you know, XDC or Zinfin. Uh, this will be a catalyst to digitize trade documents, flows, and to move away from closed ecosystems. It promises to help banks adopt a 21st century model whereby trust lies in interoperable digital assets, e.g. a freely transferable electronic bill of exchange versus relying on trusted channels, e.g. SWIFT. Assuming both tracks develop positively in the 2022 to 2024 period. Wow, following that ISO 222 adoption. Uh, the initially feared of fintech wave will have demonstrated its strategic importance to both global and local banks. Again, Pay attention to 2022 to 2024. This is focused on, you know, ISO 222 movements. I mean, this is going to be something pretty interesting, especially as we do move forward on into a digitized world. Um, but yeah, this is huge. I, I think that when we talk about these, you know, freely transferable electronic bills, aka digitizing the trade finance area, you know, this is going to be huge. Um, but let's jump into the utility. So, Again, what surprises me is XDC's value compared to what its major use cases are. We're going to be streamlining, you know, trade finax, uh, uh, trade finex. Sorry, um, this is focused on the financial markets in terms of institutions, banks, governance, and stuff like that. But also, I want you to be aware of the other use cases, like DCB Bank, for an example, right? DCB Bank, a private sector scheduled commercial bank, selected Zinfin as their blockchain partner to streamline insurance systems using, you know, blockchain. It was looking to deploy blockchain solutions. Zinfin was chosen to implement a secure technology solution to help streamline their insurance process. Like, these are the use cases that Zinfin has already in store for it. Like, this is huge. For example, TurnPay. TurnPay facilitates standardized remittance over XDC protocol that provides counterparty risk mitigation, instant payments using existing payment channels such as SWIFT. Like these are just small use cases, but they do pack a punch. I mean, this is huge, right? Um, and there's so many other ones as well, um, but I do want to put a little bit of a focus point on TradeFinex. So let's look at TradeFinex. Empowering trade finance ecosystem. Reason why this is so massive is look at the overall diagram here for how trade finance works. So again, we talk about tokenization of you know trade finance. This is basically how we get there. We do see originators, SPV, and funders, banks, fintechs, insurance, underwriters, credit rating agencies as well, regulated digital custodian, tokenization, securitization through the trade finex, uh, you know, powered by XDC, you know, protocol. This is that huge change in this entire market that will streamline almost everything. Um, but we do see here, you know, this goes again through that regulated digital custodian, tokenized securitization, funders, non-bank funders, banks, and credit issue insurance. These are huge players, guys. I mean, honestly, think about the amount of money that's going to flow over this. And also, we do see four platforms. TradeFinex is interoperable with a wide range of trade finance digitization platforms. Connect your origination platforms to a wide network of funders to get access to secondary market distribution marketplace. Love the fact that Cordis here, Oracle, Intuit, QuickBooks, you probably know them by, you know, TurboTax, uh, TradeShift as well. And we do see our four settlements, stablecoin deployment, digitize your fiat currency reserves to settle multi-currency transactions globally with two seconds finality. I'm telling you guys, pay attention to this. This is, these are major, you know, these are major uh, companies and use cases behind, you know, Zinfin. Um, we've gone over a few of these names down here, but, you know, there definitely is some other ones. R3 Cord is one that I've always mentioned multiple times. Then, of course, you have ADGM as well. Um, pay attention to the trade finance area. $19 trillion, and Zinfin is perfectly positioned to disrupt it. It's ripe for disruption. And uh, this is why I think that XDC definitely is a huge player in the space. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are on this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.